Hey, I'm Dr. Cindy Little, and I am a parapsychological paranormal researcher, and this is my series on paranormal research briefs. Hope you enjoy it. Today's paranormal research brief is the Seaford Disturbances. The Seaford Disturbances is about a classic poltergeist case investigated by parapsychologists in 1958. It started when the Duke University Parapsychology Lab saw newspaper reports of possible poltergeist activity in the Herman household in Seaford, Long Island. Mr. and Mrs. Herman and their two children, Lucille, who was 13, and James, who was 12, were experiencing strange and unexplained phenomena, such as bottles of bleach jumping out of cardboard boxes, medicine and perfume bottles popping their own caps and tipping over, toys and other objects flying across the room, and furniture falling over and breaking. By the time parapsychologists J.G. Pratt and W.G. Roll visited the Herman home, there had already been numerous witnesses of these disturbances, including police officers. When the researchers arrived, they wanted to know two things. Were the disturbances caused by something physical in the environment, or were they caused by psychokinesis? After interviewing witnesses and thoroughly investigating the home for physical causes such as checking for nearby high-frequency radio waves, unusual ground vibrations, faulty electrical wiring, air circulation in the house, changes in water levels in a nearby well, and downdrafts from the chimney, the researchers determined the activity wasn't caused by something in the environment. They also ruled out fraud. Most of the activity centered around the son, James, so initially they thought he might be pulling pranks. One of the witnesses was a police officer who testified that he saw activity happening near James, but that James didn't cause it. Additional events were seen by other witnesses when James wasn't in the room. Finally, the idea of group hallucination was ruled out because of physical objects moving and tipping over on their own. Based on this, the researchers determined the activity must be parapsychological in nature and that the son James was the center of the activity. They came to a tentative conclusion that James was unconsciously moving things with his mind through reoccurrence spontaneous psychokinesis, or RSPK. So what does this all mean? This case highlights that we still have a lot to learn about poltergeist activity and what causes it. It is also a good example of looking for natural causes before jumping to paranormal ones. If you'd like to read the actual study, it is listed in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.